When it comes to a westerly yacht, there are three things that come to mind. Lloyd's construction quality, sea kindliness, and droopy headlining. And funnily enough, fixing that is the subject of this video, which is about one approach that worked for me, tools and materials, and some solutions to challenges, including how that sorry looking space was transformed back into a warm, salubrious cabin. For a start, the fore cabin was suffering from an advanced case of westerly drupoxia, and this was without any manual intervention, pretty ghastly. Let's have a look in the head compartment. That was mostly held in place by the fittings. In this shot, as you can see, I've already removed the cabinet unit. And in the main cabin, a leaky port light had completely done for the headlining on that side. I've not recorded removing the various panels because they come out in one piece by carefully extracting dowels and then screws, or like this panel, which was pinned to its supports. The original headlining would have been applied prior to her fitting out. And my approach for this project aimed to replicate the original specification as closely as I possibly could. To begin with, I tried rough sanding and a scraper. That was about as useful as a one-legged man in an ass kicking contest. On the other hand, a wire brush on the drill was more effective, but it felt like trying to cut a large lawn with a small pair of scissors. By far the best approach was deploying the angle grinder with inexpensive poly discs and me in a full Oompa Loompa suit. As I'm sure you can appreciate by now, this is the winning strategy for Olympic dust generation. Not to mention skin exposure. Take it from me, you may as well just bathe in itching powder. I would say half the time taken was surface cleaning and then leaving overnight for the dust to settle. And this was also a good opportunity to inspect the underside of the decks for any dark patches. Thankfully, there were none. I noticed the poly discs remove nibs of protruding resin which seal in the rubbing strake fixings which opens them up to the likelihood of damp and corrosion which could lead to problems with the fixings. Factor additional project time to account for resealing them before carrying on. In my case using some thickened epoxy to avoid an expensive oversight. I elected to make new templates using cheap rolls of brown paper with double-sided sticky tape. It worked very well for me. The black lines represent meeting marks so that I can accurately line up the new seams. I did not want to use the old headlining to base new templates on. I felt the old stuff may have deformed and besides, it was horribly dusty and dirty so I wanted to keep that well away from contaminating the new stuff. Making templates, I found also good preparation for understanding tricky areas and strategizing about how to offer up the new stuff. All as I would say is, don't leave it up for too long. That's what she said. <laughs> Otherwise, this is what happens, and you'll have to start all over again, including generating lots more dust. Pork House in Gosport are supplies of the foam backed headlining and a really friendly source of advice. Whilst kits are available, it costs considerably less to do the work oneself. I also considered the fact that buying a pre-made kit assumes that no mistakes are going to be made at all. Plus, I got a boat show discount on what they advised me to buy, which was a 25 metre roll, along with a job lot of the SAF 111 and contact adhesive. And then, it was a case of planning and keeping track of consumption and working out how best to utilise the roll. What I found useful is a programme called Fusion 360, which is a drawing and modelling application. I've used it for a few different projects and it's proved effective. One was making a new cockpit grating and another one was designing and 3D printing a custom access cover. Uh, but that's for possibly another video. Let me know what you think in the comments if you think that would be interesting content. Uh, but for this project, for the headlining, uh, what I did was set up a drawing 2500 by 140 uh, centimetres that is. And then it was a case of measuring up the templates and laying them out on the drawing to work out what I felt was the optimal utilisation. So buying at the best time 
for less than half the price of a four cabin and heads compartment kit. It's supplied me with enough to do both of those cabins plus the main saloon, including all the trims and the companionway. The main cabin section is quite easy because there are no seams, but it's quite tricky due to the size, whereas the head is easy because the headlining panels are manageable sizes, but then complicated because of an unequal seam. The fore cabin is just complicated because of the size of the panels and three seams that must line up with the boat perfectly, and you need five pairs of hands. I thought I needed a heavy duty sewing machine, so I acquired a Singer Heavy Duty. But heavy duty is clearly a relative term. What I really needed was an industrial sewing machine, which in this case I sourced from Birmingham. After I sold the Singer, I think it cost about 400 quid. The big benefit to me, it can also easily handle V92 bonded polyester UV thread, typically used for canvas work, but that's another project. The thread and basting tape I sourced from Solent Sewing, but if doing it yourself isn't your thing, I believe they also undertake such work. This seamed panel for the head was the most difficult to sew because of the unequal seam around a corner. Let's just say it took me a few goes until I was satisfied, but basting tape and pegs helped considerably. By the time I overcame that challenge, I was feeling confident. Confident enough to get creative with the opening for the back of one of the two cockpit compasses. And Jack helped a lot. Not only could I slow the stitching down to 150 per minute, but also carry out one stitch at a time. And the knee control to raise the foot means that one can focus on the sewing without a lot of faffing about. Again, the four cabin panels felt the most complicated because of those critical seams and the amount of material. I allowed extra overlap to allow for basting tape to firmly fix the two panels together, which meant that I could focus on the seam alignment through the machine and Jack was more than powerful enough to walk the whole lot through. At this point, I'm hoping that I got my templates right. For the main cabin coach roof panel, I cut the headlining to the overall size and then I'll make the more detailed cuts once in place. A mistake I made a couple of times was not having the template foam side up which cost me four meters though it's all useful for making trims or for smaller sections. Right processes, hot cast, staff 111 my voice may be a little bit muffled because I'm wearing a respirator. This stuff is absolutely as toxic as you can possibly get. So I'm going to pour out about as much as I think I'll need to give a good layer. There we go. Go in the bin in a minute, and we'll stick the lead back on. So that's going to be the base layer. We'll go and do that. I'm just going to dip that in. I'm not going to coat the brush too much because otherwise it climbs up. the brush and makes a horrible mess. Just enough to give a good layer. Can be a little bit difficult to see. So the approach that I'm taking is to do it fairly methodically. try and get an even decent layer across the whole surface preferably without getting the glue all over everything else Let's pull 
Pull that back a bit. So I'm just beginning to get a bit of build up working its way up the brush. And that's a real nightmare because once it starts getting messy, it's really difficult to control the amount of mess that can be made. So this is trade tax supplied by Hawk House again. And that just requires a couple of minutes to go off. And the plan for fixing it is from the bottom up. And I'm relying on a little meeting mark. And that is going to be my first point of touch when I get that edge down as far as I can. If I can do that then the rest of it will fit nicely. So let's hope that that's what happens. So the spray glue now has is almost touched dry. It's not coming off on my fingers. So the moment of truth, this is the hard bit. This is where it can go horribly wrong lines going off already. All right, well that's that's got in. It's down. Push up at the bottom. Try and avoid creases. Corners in. Get that corner in on the bottom one. We can squeeze out there a bit more. But I'm happy with that. I would have preferred it to be half a centimetre lower. But you can see the challenge that you have trying to position it without making a first touch because as soon as you make a first touch that's blooming it. it it can be peeled back but from what I've experienced so far 
that is to be avoided at all costs. For the fore cabin, to get around my physical limitation of not having five pairs of hands, I constructed a T-piece to firmly support and lock the sewn panels lined up precisely to their meeting marks. In this way, I think it was actually better than having help, given the arms tire after a while. I think it worked out pretty well. Stage one of the saloon in progress. Same approach here, applied from the middle outwards but only the top section glued on the first pass. With the benefit of hindsight I would have cut the height to size before offering the headlining up, it would have been better, but no creases which is a good thing. And then the port lights can go back in with new sealant and the end is in sight. So to end with some clips of the end results, I consider whether it was worth it and if this kind of thing is really a DIY project. You may feel different, but for my part it does feel like the yacht is significantly restored. Everything that's in place looks like it should be there. Everything fits and that's a good outcome. I would say it is worth it. With a proviso, you really have to want to do it. The yacht came out of the water at the end of September 22 and was relaunched just before Easter. With all of the other annual maintenance tasks that have to be crossed off the list, plus some other smaller projects, plus doing it single-handed for the first time, a marathon rather than a sprint felt manageable. Preferring to go sailing, there wasn't time for both sides of the main cabin. One can't ignore the fact that there is dismantling of the interior to do just to be able to start the job. And that takes some time if you also want to refinish woodwork. Buying a pre-cut and prepared kit or having a powerful enough sewing machine, I would say is an absolute prerequisite. While there are other linings or finishing options, whichever is chosen, all the hard work is in the preparation, not the finish. Whilst I had the advantage of a bare canvas, I took that opportunity to install new wiring to accommodate some additional lighting. Anyone who sailed at night will appreciate why bright white lights are not very nice, and I prefer softer, more indirect illumination. So I put some extra circuits in to accommodate 12 volt RGB dimmable LED lighting. What I'm finding is they consume half the power of the pre-existing LED bulbs, or much less at dimmer brightness. For the head, the must-have was a fixed switch, not a remote control, and this was the best option I could find for the design I wanted. Somewhat overkill, but one can enjoy a veritable lighting disco while sitting on the loo and having a ponder. The whole boat can be set up for night sailing at the push of a few buttons. So summing up, including the machine, the tools and materials, the project cost me less than £2,000 by doing it myself. So I hope, if you're considering a similar project, that this video may help you in some way. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or helpful suggestions. Thank you for watching.